You never want to begin a gathering with an administrative message. It sets the wrong tone. Hi, my name's Gina Rockenwagner, and this is my first video blog podcast. Um, what else could we call it? Meeting of Fiber Fanatics. Um, so I don't want to, you know, explain too much and say too much in the intro because who cares about that? Um, <laughs> I just want to get right to it and kind of let the content speak for itself. So my name is Gina Rockenwagner, um, coming to you live and direct from Los Angeles, California. And I am a knitter, a sewer, a general fiber freak and fanatic, um, hopefully like yourself. And I want to talk about what I'm making. And I'm hoping to do this once a week. Uh, if I say that out loud, maybe I'll be held accountable for it. So um, a weekly regroup and update about what I'm making and probably will include some um, cat action uh, impromptu as it always is uh, you know they don't work on command and uh, you know maybe we'll talk about cooking too if you guys care about that I don't know I don't know I'm I'm willing to let the community drive what this weekly video is about so hit me up I'll always take your suggestion, gladly. Maybe I'll fight you on it, but I'll try to do it in a nice way, so. Um, well, let's talk about what I've been knitting. I uh, just finished this cardigan. It's my earthen cardigan from Pom Pom, and it was designed by Amy Christopher's. Um, I have to get the issue. <laughs> Here it is. Um, it's from issue 29, this is what the cover looks like, and um, I knit it out of a bunch of different hand dyed sock yarns. The top is Kindred Red. I can put all the colors and um, information in the show notes, but the top is Kindred Red and then I have a Hedgehog, I think this color is called Pesto Hedgehog Fiber Sock, um, and then Something from Left Coast Dye Works. I think this color is called um, Paleta de Limon. And then the bottom is all hedgehog. Um, three different colors. So I use six different um, skeins in total. And it's sock yarn. And I used two strands knit together to make it um, a DK weight, which is what's required in the pattern. And I, um, I, I think my gauge was a little tight, so I ended up using most of the yarn. I had like just a smidge left over from, um, I think three of the skeins, but the other three I used almost in total in their entirety. So, um, yeah, I was pretty like spot on with the yarn requirements, but my gauge was a little off. Um, also, I, for the neckline, for the, the button band, I wanted to change the color according to the fade so it didn't look like a dark band here or like a light, light, light band here. I wanted it to match the part of the body it was attached to. So I, thought a bit about how to do that and it took some um, like consideration to get it right because I couldn't have too many sections because I didn't want to break up my like last remaining bits of yarn into like six different balls so what I ended up doing was I did two of the darker colors for each side of the bottom and then I did the two lightest colors for the top so basically like where the neck decreases started is where I changed colors and I thought it would be a really abrupt transition um, that was something I was worried about but then as I was knitting I realized that um, the buttonhole and the button on the other side kind of break it up um, 
yeah, so it, it ends up not being like a super harsh transition. And I got these buttons at FNS in LA on Pico. Um, they happen to go perfectly and I was so glad to find them. They're pretty great. So yeah, that's Amy Christopher's earthen cardigan from issue 29 of Pom Pom Quarterly. Um, another thing that I, oh wait, we're still talking about knitting, right? What I'm knitting now that I finished this cardigan is a little like wing it self invented um, pullover in Noro and I will show you right now. Oops. Okay, so this is something that I started years ago. Um, I can't remember when I started it. Maybe at least a year ago, maybe two. Um, it's a Noro yarn. It's mainly cotton. I can't even remember what it's called. I'll look for it and I'll put it in the show notes. But it, I started in the center with like eight stitches or something and I just kept increasing out and out until I made a big square. And then I added on for the shoulders. I did that for the back side as well, join the shoulder seams. And then I picked up for the side and started to knit this dolman sleeve. Um, I already have the cuffs in it as well, so I'm on sleeve island, as they say. Um, but yeah, I'm working on this and it's gonna have um, a slit in the side, basically from where the underarm is, where the sleeve starts down it's gonna be open and I did this little one by one rib trim I think it's gonna be cute I am trying to finish old projects at the end of this year I don't know why I um, really feel like finishing old projects it's just kind of like a nice way to finish out the year but um, other people in my life have been like prompting me to do it so <laughs> um, it's it's fun I'm enjoying it even though I like you know get kind of like depressed by unfinished projects and want to just like put them aside and start the new thing. It's been um, cool to kind of like to see things all the way through and see them to the end. So yeah, we're almost at new pullover time. Um, and let's talk about what I'm going to knit when that is done. I, I've been really into, into making cardigans this year. Um, I've made at least three cardigans already this year. Um, hmm. I also made a cardigan vest for my grandma. So four, I guess, technically, but that, it didn't have sleeves. I want to make another cardigan with, um, one strand of each of these. Um, this is just some um, fingering weight with Stellina yarn that I dyed, and this one I also dyed. It's a mohair silk blend, um, just you know the regular bases that everybody gets. Um, and this is some really super fine yarn that I got at Rhinebeck last year. Um, I want to do two strands of this. It's kind of like a self striping, but it's so subtle that you barely see the stripe. I think it's going to be like a really magical, like fairy floss, cotton candy dream sprinkles cardigan with pockets. Okay, so now let's talk about sewing. Sewing. Let's talk about sewing. So I made one of these trend pattern 70s dress for my bridal shower. It was cream and I used like a silk Swiss dot fabric and a daisy trim um, around the waist and the neckline and the first tier of the skirt. So I knew I really liked this pattern and I had some ideas of the changes that I wanted to make, but I made another version of this to wear to my cousin's wedding 
and I made it in this like fuchsia silk it was really fun I spent like two days straight on it um I think I got a little faster because the first one took me a whole week to make um I worked on it like for seven days straight this one it only took me two days um maybe three if you count the cutting it takes a while to cut stuff um, so yeah, it came out great. I was really happy with it and I had a good time wearing it to the party. So I want to make more of these. I want to make them in cotton and like other, um, fabrics I can wear in the daytime. I think that would be really fun. And I'm also working on, oops, I'm a noob at this and I knocked the camera. So, uh, maybe I jumped around a little bit, but. Anyway, we dyed all these napkins for our wedding in June. Alex and I worked on them together. It took us months to do them. Between the dyeing and the ironing, <laughs> it was such a, a big effort. But anyway, now we have all these hand-dyed napkins left over from the wedding to use for whatever, you know, I wanted to make quilts out of them, but I have enough to make a bunch of quilts so I sewed together 30 of them to make a queen size quilt for our bed which I'm probably gonna send away to be quilted um, I did it in a gradient from corner to corner it's so great um, I can't wait to show it when it's done but it probably won't be done until like next year so I'm also making as gifts for the people who helped us planning our wedding um, I'm making these throw blankets with the napkins and I made the first one. I'm really excited with how it turned out. Um, Alex is also helping me with the quilts so it's it's a fun thing to work on together and I think the people who get them are gonna really love them so it's great. I can't wait for mine. Um, I used Essex for the back. It's um, a cotton linen blend and it has a really nice uh, crinkly texture that I really like and it's nice and heavy so these feel, feel really warm and cozy. I love it. I'm so glad with how it turned out. It's like a perfect throw size. Each napkin is about 18 by 18 so when they're sewn together they're about 17 and a half square um, and so the, these blankets are three by four and they're just great they're just tied because that's easy and fast and i used some navy sashiko to tie it with initially i tied it with a lighter thread and fewer ties and i didn't like how it looked so i redid it with this darker thread and i alex and i think it looks much better this way so yeah so that's what i've been working on this week i'm also working on dyeing a bunch of things for um, our craft fair dates coming up. The, the first one is in just three weeks. It's in San Francisco, West Coast Craft. I'm coming to, um, really excited for that. And then Thanksgiving is after that. And then not that weekend, but the weekend after is West Coast Craft in LA at the Row. So if you're a hometown friend, um, come. I would love to see you. Um, and I'm gonna be there with, probably with Alex. The San Francisco one, I'm definitely bringing Alex. And I think the LA one, I'll be with Eliza, who has been helping me out and I love her so much. She's amazing. So we're gonna be the, out there selling a bunch of soft house goods, um, sweaters, hand dyed t-shirts, sweatshirts, what else? We have socks, um, it's gonna be fun. So I always love selling at craft fairs because I get to see friends that I only see at that time of the year, which is really nice. You get to catch up and like see what they've been making and buy some stuff. I always end up shopping too, so you'll probably be able to get like, if you wanna get gifts or if you wanna get things for yourself, um, you'll, you'll be able to find some stuff and spent some dollars so and the makers that you support will be so happy that you came out and supported them so definitely check it out uh west coast craft in san francisco and in la 
Soft House. Soft House is my brand. I will put that in the pop-up bar. And I think that's it for this week. So thanks for tuning in. And make sure to let me know what you think of my first podcast. I'm still new at this, so would love to hear your feedback. And anything you want me to talk about, more or less, or not at all. Um, probably not gonna never talk about my cats. I'm surprised they didn't make an appearance in this video, but hey, you know, maybe they just didn't work out their contract for the appearance. So yeah, I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.